Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 110. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch the show and invest in learning a little bit more about the EV landscape. So, got a few stories that I'm talking about. Let me get right into it. Now, as everybody knows, I track the global plug-in sales. The numbers were out for August. They're always a bit behind, even though we're into October now. But the August numbers show that there was a total of 241,000 plug-ins sold or registered globally. Again, that's plug-ins, which equates for about 3.8% of the total global market. Um, overall, there's about just under 1.5 million EVs uh, or plug-ins sold so far this year globally. Can anybody guess the number one EV still holding the top rank? Well, you've guessed it. The Tesla Model 3, of course, globally has over almost 200,000 units have been sold at the end of August. So again, these numbers are going to be a bit low. Uh, and then there's some more Chinese brands that are creeping back into the top 10 because they've been up and running for a while. So you can see those numbers. Uh, brand wise, again, it's no surprise that Tesla is continuing to own the uh, plug-in marketplace globally with uh, over 250,000 units sold. That's combined three X, Y, and S. I know I forgot something. And no, I didn't spell it the way Elon wants you to spell it. Um, so that's good. Now look at VW's numbers, almost 90,000 at the end of August. So they've really started to, to, to creep up some numbers. They've still been, of course, producing the e-golf in parts of Europe and the up, e up machine. But uh, they've, uh, of course, got the ID3 cranking out now and starting to get going uh, for the last few months. So it's starting to register in these numbers, which is great. Renault is holding and uh, Nissan, nah, unfortunately, Nissan has dropped. They're now in 13th place overall at the end of August with just over 35,000. Good numbers. Uh, again, we're still down year over year on plug-in sales from 2019. Um, as I've been continually revising my numbers, I do expect us to fall. I still think we might fall a bit short of that 2.3, 2.4 million dollar, a million unit mark. However, some analysts are saying we'll overachieve. We'll go over 2.5 into the 3 million. So I hope so. Let's wait and see. Quick announcement this week from GM. I actually watched, I was all pumped to watch this live cast uh, thinking that they talk about the Hummer and all kinds of other stuff. And no, it, I mean, it's significant that GM, they talked about the uh, Detroit uh, Hamtrank uh, assembly center which is now renamed factory zero and that's to reflect their uh, mantra of zero crashes zero emissions and zero congestion it will be gm's launch pad for their multi-brand ev strategy we've heard a lot from gm you know with the altium batteries uh, the Cadillac division utilizing that, all the other divisions and the brands starting to pull from that. So this plant's going to be critical to the future of a lot of those brands. It's going to have advanced technology and tooling, and it was designed on sustainable manufacturing. So I always like to hear that. The GMC Hummer EV pickup and the Cruise Origin will be built at this plant along with the other GM EVs. This is a $2.2 billion investment for uh, GM and you know it's nice to see all these investments uh, happening. I tweeted about Ford's investment in Canada recently uh, in investing uh, a, a, you know over a billion dollars for the Oakville plant and some other plants for electrification. Just FCA this week has talked about their uh, 1.5 billion dollar um, investment in Windsor to convert that into more electrified platforms. So great to see manufacturers starting to actually throw some money down on this. I, I highlighted Lucid Air in a few shows ago when they did their big reveal. Of course, there's been a lot of buzz from that. And one of them is uh, they've just announced pricing on the most affordable Air version, simply just called the Lucid Air. Uh, it's going to start with an MSRP of about 77400 US dollars. And when you add in the federal uh, tax incentive or tax credit of 7500 that it, somebody could qualify for, that can bring it down over or under, sorry, the $70,000 US barrier at six. Now, that is a pretty comprehensive machine with uh, EPA rated, well, estimated, I shouldn't say EPA rated yet because it hasn't been out, but estimated 406 miles uh, at 480 horsepower, so it's quite a significant machine. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now, of course, I call it car wars. There's been a lot of activity this week with Tesla and Elon. Follow, after that came out, uh, Tesla and Elon announced a, a price drop in the Model S. Uh, 
range. So it dropped about 3000 bucks US to close the gap. So now the uh, Model S long range is at 71.9, so just slightly more than um, the Lucid Air with the federal tax credit. Good to see the competition. I love it because it drives excitement, it drives interest, which is really important. Now across the pond in France, Renault has announced uh, their all-new electric Megane, or Megane, if I am. Oh, I probably butchered the name. I haven't looked it up. The eVision concept, um, and it's based on their on their version of the CMF EV platform, which of course remember that was developed by the Renault, Mitsubishi, and Nissan Alliance. So that's a similar platform. It's a compact hatchback design. Again, all the rage in Europe and in I, in truth in Canada, we love compact hatchbacks here. And it seems that 95% of what you're seeing here of this concept is actually going to be reality and what the car is going to look like. Um, it has, it's going to start production in 2021 in France, and then they'll offer, Renault will offer more all electric battery vehicles based on this platform. Um, one of the things about this platform is that it has an ultra flat, uh, only 11 centimeter of height of the battery pack. And these, these ones apparently announced will have a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, good for about 450 kilometers or 280 miles of WLTP range. Again, EPA is going to be a little lower than that, but certainly probably over 400 kilometers, which is not too bad. Um, they only showed a single motor, but uh, it does. It, there is uh, data that the platform will have all-wheel drive versions as well, or dual motors. Other than those specs, uh, it'll have a 160 kilowatt motor on that, so at least a single one. Onboard charging up to 22 kilowatts for three phase, or 7.4 for one phase uh, here in North America, and DC fast charging for up to 130 kilowatts. So I'm glad to see these numbers starting to cre creep up on the DC fast charging, even for the smaller compact range. It's important to bring, bring that charging experience when you need it to a little bit quicker uh, element. It'll help with uh, sales. No pricing or anything else yet uh, announced on this, but I'm excited to see what Renault continues to come out with on this vehicle and what else they have in store. Seems like Europe has a lot of announcements in the last couple of weeks, and Mercedes is no slouch for announcements. They've confirmed the upcoming expansion of their EQ electric car range. Remember, that's the brand that Mercedes has pegged for their electrified automobile platforms. Now, they only have two models today, the EQC SUV, which is being sold in Europe and other parts of countries, and also the EQV van, which I showcased several shows ago. Really nice van. So they've got those two models out there. Well, they've now confirmed that an additional six EQ models. And here's a whole alphabet soup of the, the, uh, the naming, the EQA, the EQB, the EQS, the EQE, and SUV variants of both the EQS and the EQE. Uh, all these, uh, right now Mercedes-Benz is uh, currently testing a number of prototypes around the world, so you may actually spot one of these, and as you're seeing in some of these spy shots. And by 2030, Mercedes-Benz expects that all electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles will account for more than half of its car sales. So they're aiming in this decade, by the end of the decade, to have 50% of their sales being electrified. Good for them. I'd like to see a bit more, but uh, at least they're doing something. Quick info I got from Mitsubishi. I'm on their mailing list. They sent me an announcement about the redesigned Eclipse Cross. Now that design is going to be for the petrol version here in North America and other parts of the country, but they are coming out with their first plug-in hybrid electric version of the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. It's only going to be in select marketplaces in Asia, Europe, and Australia um, as a plug-in uh, hybrid electric, and it should probably use the drive system and battery pack from the current best-selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, the Mitsubishi Outlander. If you didn't know, it's the best-selling in the world. Um, the sales of these should uh, start in early next year. Again, in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Germany. If anybody has got one on pre-order or is interested in one of these and they see it, please let me know what you're seeing because I'd love to hear from you. Now, there are no plans to bring the plug-in hybrid electric version to the North American marketplace. Well, they mentioned USA, which usually means Canada as well. We kind of get lumped in with that, which is too bad uh, because, again, the Outlander, I did a review on it. It is a decent SUV. It's got a decent-sized battery pack at 13.8. It gets okay range, you know, enough for a good amount of daily use cases. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on this in sales. I, I hope Mitsubishi gets to the all-electric game very soon.
And one quick email that I received from Nissan recently about the um, their unveiling of the 100% electric emergency response vehicle concept um, designed to provide mobile power supply following natural disasters or extreme weather events or something similar. It's called the ReLeaf, the RE Leaf. Great name. Obviously, it's a Nissan Leaf passenger car with modifications to allow it to go a little bit more off-road or to navigate some de debris. Uh, features weatherproof plug sockets mounted directly to the exterior of the vehicle, which can enable 110 to 230 volt devices to be powered from the car's high capacity lithium ion battery. Uh, the concept here is really take this relief, drive it into the center of a disaster zone or wherever help is needed to provide full mobile power. So in, instead of trailering in generators and things like that, you could, this will be a little bit easier to get to some, some smaller and tighter areas, of course, uh, considering the size of the vehicle to aid in recovery processes. It's got an integrated energy, energy management system that can run medical, communications, a lighting, heating, and other life support equipment. Excellent, excellent concept. And, you know, just uh, as a bit of historical, Nissan's actually already been, been working quite closely uh, in Japan. They use the LEAF, the current LEAFs, and the past LEAFs to provide emergency power and transportation following natural disasters since 2011. Remember, the LEAF is one of the few that offers bi-directional charging, so it has the capability to not only receive power, but to give it out as well. So they've been doing that for quite some time. They form partnerships with over 60 local governments to support uh, local uh, disaster relief efforts. So glad to see something like this. I'm, probably, I'm sure we'll probably see more of this come out in the future as well. This story came in after I finished the video. GMC did their reveal of the uh, Hummer EV a couple days ago, and a lot of press around that. Um, it's not going to be a cheap vehicle by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely going to have more specs that you can shake a stick at. Um, it's going to come originally in the EV Edition 1, which apparently now they've uh, sold out of reservations for that. That's the first release. Now, that's supposed to come out in the fall of 2021. We don't know... Um, how many reservations they have. There's speculation between five and 10,000, but uh, nothing's proven yet. Uh, but that's a limited edition with uh, three motors, 350 plus mile range, and 1,000 horsepower or 11,500 pound feet of torque. You'll be able to pull that stump out of the uh, garden for sure. Zero to 60 in three seconds, these beasts. And going to come in three other models the EV Hummer 2, the EV Hummer 2. Uh, 2X and the Hummer EV 3X and basically as it sounds two motors and then two motors with some other goodies and three motors. Now the three motor design is a tri-motor so it's one motor over the, the front wheel drive axle that drives both uh, wheels um, and then the back will have two independent motors on the same axle and uh, each motor will drive one wheel. So for on the tri-motor you can get tr pretty well true uh, 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 what is that called torque vectoring excuse me um, so pretty significant um, performance and all kinds of different things on this thing for sure. Um, so as I mentioned, 750 kilowatts of horsepower uh, equaling 1,000 horsepower. So really impressive. Now, um, obviously you're seeing some great video and, and pics here. It looks good, all kinds of different options. Um, you know, the design is good. It looks like it's a, it's a, it's a modernized Hummer. I, I wasn't a big Hummer fan, to be, you know, obviously. Uh, way too much gas, way, you know, eight miles a gallon, anything to brag about. But uh, I can see in some applications where something like that would be great. So now we talk about the price. Uh, the addition one price that's uh, so far sold out of early reservations is 113, almost 113,000 US. That's about 147,000 Canadian. Um, so who knows? They're supposed to arrive next fall in 2021, and then in the start of uh, sorry, in the same period in 2022, after the summer and the fall, then you'll get the uh, the, the second most expensive machine, which is the Hummer EV3X, priced at 100 grand US or about 130 to 133 thousand Canadian, and then the Hummer EV2X in the spring of 2023 at just under 90,000 US or 118,000 Canadian at this time with the exchange rates. And then the Hummer EV2 at some point, probably 
depending on the pattern. It looks like, yep, spring of 2024, and that'll come in at under 80,000, 79.9 US at 105,000 Canadian at today's exchange. So what does all this mean? Well, it means that GMC is going to produce, by the sounds of it, limited numbers, and they're going to release each model um, uh, in a subsequent year. So this is going to be a four-year rollout between now and 2024 for all four of these different uh, trim and model levels of the Hummer EV. Um, you know, good. I mean, I, I think it's good. I don't have any specs on the battery pack size, and that's something that I thought I had, but I can't seem to find anything. Um, so I'm sure that somebody's going to correct me. Uh, but, you know, all kinds of things. One of the things they did talk about was 800 volt DC fast charging. So which is good, as I mentioned, up to 350 kilowatts of fast charging. Uh, I hope they'll be able to push something that. So I'm estimating that they should have a battery packs size in excess of 100 kilowatt hours. Uh, probably in the 125 to 150 range, I'm guessing, but uh, uh, I'm sure somebody's uh, going to come up with some more data on that, but that's about all I have. So look for the GMC Hummer EV. If you've got a reservation in, please let me know uh, for the first model and let me know what you hear from them as uh, as time ticks on. Um, again, you know, I'm glad to see electrification, especially in, in, in the big vehicle marketplace, the gas guzzlers, of course. However, I'm still disappointed in the, in the seemingly what the numbers are going to be for this. And, you know, it's way out of the mass market pricing. This is really a niche product. Maybe GM might sell 20, 30, 40, 50,000 of them. Great. That's that's that many less tailpipes. But, you know, they really need to step it up with more mass market EVs, not just the higher price vehicles. Now, last story today is about Rivian. Just quickly, Amazon uh, threw out some video and some pictures on their first uh, delivery of the Rivian's Amazon's electric delivery vans that they've ordered. Um, you're seeing the video and all that stuff here. Now, Amazon's made a climate pledge which commits to net zero carbon by 2040, so about 20 years. The company hopes to have 10,000 electric uh, delivery trucks on the road within the next two years and 100,000 this decade, which is excellent. It ordered 100,000 of these future delivery vans from Rivian and some additional vehicles from other makers. So people are wondering where Rivian's getting some money from. Well, here's one thing. They've got an order for 100,000 100, or less now. They've delivered some of these uh, from Amazon. Um, and uh, Rivian has made these not simply just electric delivery vans uh, for all intents purposes, but they focused on the vehicle safety as well as design that centers around the optimization of package delivery. So they've uh, eased uh, some address and some issues like entering and exiting the van for the driver, visibility, and uh, leading driver assist and navigation technologies, including a 360 degree camera system around the vehicle that's linked to the cabin so the driver can always be around the surroundings and that's critical especially when you know in Europe and these guys are trying to do deliveries in tight areas and back up and do turns and stuff it can be you know quite nerve-wracking I'm sure so great to have that 360 visibility uh, just for fun they threw in uh, Amazon Alexa voice commands whatever if that's your thing great they've already delivered um, hundreds of these they don't say exact number uh, to Amazon they've already have uh, hundreds of these on the road excuse me around the world and they can also Amazon continues continues to invest in a charging infrastructure to, to be able to power their fleet. So great to see, you know, a large, one of the largest companies in the world now, if not the largest, um, get into this uh, in, in a, a hard way and, uh, and prove it out. So congratulations to them. All right, well, now it's time for mailbag. Yeah, I got a, actually a couple of great emails over the last couple of weeks for some viewers. Uh, one, and I asked them if I could share these stories, and they said, sure, go for it. So one of them is from um, Eamon. He's in England, if I, and sorry, in Ireland, in Dublin area, and he sent me uh, just a little blurb about a business that um, he and another gentleman are forming. So this is, this is a bit of a plug for him, uh, all pun intended, of course. But basically what they're doing is battery swaps on older leaves um, and basically they can add they can increase the older leaves so predominantly the 24 and even the 30 kilowatt versions to 60 um, they can add an additional 9 kilowatts add an additional 18 kilowatts or even swap the module uh, from a uh, 40 kilowatt pack, uh, so put that into an older one, and then they can extend the Leaf Plus as well in a module swaps in the different price points and stuff to add anywhere from another 60 to 300 kilometers of range, uh, really, on that. So uh, pretty good, and, uh, you know, it's something new that they started. And again, I always congratulate innovation. I love to see people who are passionate about the industry uh, actually launch some businesses and try to do things to it. So congratulations, and check these guys out. And also have another email from a viewer, Sten, from Sweden. 
um, I forget the city, but he basically sent me, you're seeing some pictures and stuff, his little story about how he got his VW ID3, which is great. Congratulations, uh, Stan, on, and your wife, of course, on the ID3. They took delivery in the middle of September. Um, they, they did a bit of a journey to actually look at charging infrastructure and what they could put in their home and all that kind of stuff. So he, he sent me a great little story about their experience here, but they're very happy with, uh, with their initial uh, purchase that, they, that they've made. Um, everything came very nicely to them. Um, they said that there have been a few uh, bug apps um, and some of the software, which is something we've been hearing from early uh, European uh, delivery uh, uh, owners. Um, that's to be expected. VW was still working on that, but they will they will get it fixed. They're a big company, and I know that they'll get it fixed. Um, but anyway, you know they're planning already planning longer road trips in it and experiencing the freedom that all electric can give you. So congratulations again, and thanks for sending me this information. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in and watching on YouTube for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. You can click that bell, get automatically notified of shows and all that good stuff that YouTube offers you. It's really important. Appreciate you taking the time to watch the show. Love to hear your comments. As always, I try to answer each and every comment uh, that I can as much within the time permit. So please sending them to me. Thanks for doing that. Of course, always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are at the end of each and every show that I do, including Tesla timeouts and, and, and anything else, I always put Patreon supporters at the end. It's very important. So if you're interested in helping me by supporting me, I know times are tough. Please look at the site, check it out, and, uh, and, and, and do what you feel that you want to do. Please, everybody, continue now to stay safe. We're seeing wave twos around the world. We're seeing some partial rollbacks in different areas. You know what you need to do in your area. Um, all I can say is just follow common sense guidelines. Please, folks, this is something to be taken seriously. So please stay safe. Lots going on on the EV Revolution show. Um, you know, my uh, car review uh, show is just about to come out, my next car review show. So look for that. And I'll continue to follow the marketplace, even though, you know, things have slowed down in some markets. There's still a lot of movement in the EV marketplace. So that's encouraging. I think 2022 now seems to be what 2020 would have been. <laughs> if you talk, if you watch the shows a few years ago, 2020 seemed to be this magical unicorn year. Now it seems maybe 2022 will be, and obviously with COVID and everything, that's thrown a wrench into, into a lot of future plans. But we're going to come through this very positive, folks. So again, everybody stay safe. And until the next show, please uh, continue to watch, support. Uh, I got all kinds of other stuff on the channel, so check it out. Don't forget my audio podcast as well. And until then, I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.